you. I got to bribe y'all too. I got to bribe y'all. I got a couple of chicken pieces in my <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Y'all doing all right today? Yes, sir. Good. I want to first say uh, thank you to my mom. Mom, can you raise your hand? Can y'all give her a round of applause? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, you by me um, from the beginning. Uh, my wife, who is also a Whitehaven graduate, could not be here. She had surgery. She sends her, her kind regards, um, and we want to say thank you. So let me start off by just saying to the 2021 Whitehaven football team, players, can y'all stand up for me? Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Come on, let's go. Hey, hey listen, y'all still got young E. I'm going to need you to use today. Now, guys, listen. Y'all could be anywhere in the world tonight, right? Hey, look, look at me when I'm talking to you, everybody. You could be anywhere, but you chose to be here, right? Coach just told me in COVID, he had about 50 players that didn't have a game, but they still came to work. Guys, we want to tell you that we love you. We support you. Listen, we need you. Like, it's you. The, it's not about the future. It's about the present. This is your time, right? Can we give them a round of applause, guys? And uh, listen, to the administration, to, to the faculty, family, to the coaching staff, let me tell you. Yeah, y'all can sit down, guys. Uh, I was check checking them young knees. Uh, to the administrator, to the coaching staff, listen, I am convinced there is a man in this room that is ahead of his time. He has been coaching for 22 years. When I read his bio, I was blown away. There's so many accolades. I cannot even begin to announce them. <clears throat> coach of the year twice. Tennessee Titan coach of the year. Shelby County several, multiple times coach of the year. Listen, they may not have won the state championship year, but he had the formula. I need you to stand by him. I need you to stand with him. You understand? He has the formula. He knows how to win, right? And those here today are on his side, in his corner, and I'm excited to be standing in front of you uh, because he is worthy to be called a giant in the field of coaching, right? So can we give him a, a round of applause as well? <laughs> so by a show of hands, by a show of hands, how many of you woke up this morning, how many of you woke up this morning wanting to be average? Hold on, let me see, let me say that again. How many woke up this morning wanting to be average? Anybody in the front? My eyes ain't too good, guys, I'm still searching. Anybody in the middle? Nobody. Anybody in the back? Can y'all help me back? Anybody woke up this morning wanting to be average? I can believe it. If there's anybody in the house that woke up wanting to be great, say I. I. What that tells me is, it tells me that there has been a stage in your journey that you've chosen um, to run after something great. You've chosen to aspire for greatness. You've chosen to have some high achievement in your life, right? To build a business, to become an entrepreneur, right? To learn how to raise a high school kid that's respectful, kind, and that has some vision. All these things are great um, opportunities that you can look to learn to lead. But I'm interested to know, in all the greatness that you were trying to accomplish, have you ever stumbled because of bad decisions? Staggered a little bit because of you didn't work as hard as you should, you should have? Anybody? You could have worked a, a little bit longer. Yeah. I could have watched a little more film. I've staggered. I've stumbled. I, all the way down to my knees. Sometimes failure has a way of putting your face to the ground. Seven and four, didn't win the state championship. You made promises that you didn't keep. But that's okay. We're going to talk about how to get up after you've fallen down. All right. 
See, 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 failure, it teaches you more. It teaches you more not about success. Failure teaches you about yourself. See, are you more concerned with what people think about you? Or are you concerned with how am I going to learn from this, this challenge in front of me? Let me put a flag right here. Never allow other people's opinions of you to become your opinion of yourself. Right. Humiliate, failure, promises, not kept, broken. How do you get up after you fall? I remember my mom at her house one day, she kneeled down, picked up a piece of paper, saw it on the ground, and then she reached out to me and she said, baby, come here, can you help me up? I ran over, it's mama, y'all. I should have picked the paper up in the first place, <laughs> right? She's teaching me a lesson. And she said, uh, she laughed, she said, she said, baby, how many of y'all mama call y'all baby, sugar? <laughs> she said, baby, she said, it's easy getting down. Y'all know what's next. She said, but it's hard, what? Yeah. She said, it's hard. It's hard getting up. Any of y'all gonna get up after this season? I'm going to challenge you today. You might have to sit Indian style because I might step on some toes. I did not come here to speak. I came here to have a conversation about greatness. Come on. Did anybody think I stayed down there too long? My knees might disagree with y'all, but... <laughs> if, you, if there were times when you have fallen, have you ever stayed down there? too long. I have. It was a remarkable time of my life. Let me tell you about it. I had just signed a letter of intent with the University of Georgia. I was the top athlete, one of the top athletes in the world. I was a great All-American, USA Today All-American. I was six foot three, dark and lovely. <laughs> I'm joking. Listen, I was six foot three. I ran a 4240. I had a 42 inverted belief. God gifted me. But I remember signing a letter, of a letter of intent at the University of Georgia, and I remember the spiral downward as I got kicked out of school. Six months before the draft, I lost millions because I was not paying attention. A 428. I did not study, right? I lost millions because I was not paying attention. I was smoking, I, I was drinking. I barely remember going to class. I, listen, I wasn't proud of it then. I'm not proud of it now. But I have something to stand on. See, I didn't stay working. I didn't stay down. Kicked out of school, I went to Texas, Texas Southern University. Got in school, got kicked out of school again. I stayed down too what? Too long. Moved to Memphis and was homeless for a while. I stayed down what? I allowed that life experience to keep me face down to the ground. Hey, be careful about failure. Be careful. Don't get comfortable in that place. Your greatness suggests that you got to shake it off. Oh, yeah. You got to get up, stand up. Now, so. So I stayed down too long. Let me ask this question again. I want to see how many honest people in the house. Has anybody stayed down too long? Let me see a show of hands. See, these, these kids, they still learning how to, how to be uh, self-reflective. We've lived long enough to look back and say, you know, I could have did a better. I could have did a better job. So. We're here today and I'm excited to be here. We have an opportunity to turn a dream into a reality. So after you've been knocked down, how do you get up? What do you do? So really quickly, three tested, time-tested tools to transform failure into a fulfilled life. Help me out, failure, failure. into a and to a fulfilled life. Three tools. Somebody say understanding. Understanding. Hold on. Hold on.
Hold up, come here, King. Come here. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, I'm a school teacher. I'm sorry. Y'all have to come here, King. Come here. Can, can you say it again really loud for me? Understanding. I N N E R. Understanding. What do you mean? Understanding. And then tool number two is understanding. So that's understanding. There's understanding. Tool number three is overstanding. Hey, I'm getting excited, y'all. <laughs> y'all got to come with me. I'm telling you, it took me from the gutter. I walked away from, from running a multi-million dollar business just two years ago, and I just told you how my life was 20 years ago. Right? Don't tell me you can't get up after being knocked down. All right. Tool number one, understanding, I-N-N-E-R, standing. So understanding is what? Self-awareness, self-assessment. Understanding says, it says, I see. Somebody say, I see. I see. I see where? I see within. Look in the mirror and you'll say, I see me. Understanding, understanding suggests not only do I see my strengths, I, see my I got some people in here that's, that went to church this Sunday with me. <laughs> I see my weaknesses. See, most people are not humble enough. Let me say that again. I heard a mm -hmm in the crowd. Most people are not humble enough. I was not humble enough to see my weaknesses, which is why I lost them. Most people are not humble enough to see their weaknesses. If you're humble enough to identify your weaknesses, see, only then are you, can you become strong enough to attack them. And when you attack your weaknesses, you, you stand up on the inside. You enter what? You enter stand, right? Tool number two. Tool number two is what? Anybody remember? Understanding. Understand to understand, what, what do you mean? To, to, to understand. A foundation, something upon an item is built. Understanding says, says I believe. What do you mean? How does understanding and belief, how do, how do they Amalgamate. How do they party together? How do they dance with each other? See, when you believe, see, when, when, you, when, when, you, when you understand, you talk about a foundation, something that you stand on, believe. Understanding says, I believe in me, right? But more importantly, it says that I believe in a higher power, the Most High God. So if you're going to understand on something, you stand on the belief that I can. That the God that I serve, he says that I believe that I am what? More than a conqueror. Yeah. Somebody understand where I'm headed. Yeah. He said that I believe that I proclaim that every place that the sole of my foot touches. Hallelujah. Every place that the sole of my foot, king, king, queen, king, queen, across the room. Every place that the sole of my foot touches, he said, that shall be given what? Unto me. He has already given it to me, so why should I believe it? Because it was mine before I was born. He has established an inheritance. To, to, to understand. So rule number three, overstanding. Overstanding says, oh, this is this is this is simple but not easy. It's simple, but it ain't easy, bro. To overstand says I know. To understand says I see, right? To understand says what? I believe, right? Y'all with me? Uh -huh. And then to overstand to say, overstand says I know. Oh my goodness, to know, 